Hello and coming up in this episode I can tell you about a gentleman I met a couple of weeks ago and ended up selling him a air arms air rifle to go with the Hawk scope. He was going uh, back into shooting as he was now an allotment owner and was going to try and sort out the rabbits, pigeons, the crows and just about everything else that is a gardener's nightmare. And when I asked him what his plans were to shoot the rabbits at night, uh, his answer was he was going to use a torch. Well, I was approached this week by a company who might have just the ticket for him for his nighttime rabbit shooting on a budget. Perfect piece of kit to change your day scope into a night scope. Hello. Welcome back. I consider it a great compliment when a company asks me if I would do a review on a piece of their equipment. Well, that happened this week. A company got in contact with me and sent me a Commander NV100 night vision add-on device. A fantastic piece of kit. Uh, it, it will record in full HD colour with audio and then with a touch of a button you can switch across the black and white and by using its own built-in IR light, it will illuminate out to 328 yards. There's six individual settings for the brightness on the IR light, and on top of that, you can also adjust it for a flood or a spot beam. The unit comes complete with a 32 gig micro SD card and its own 18650 rechargeable battery. The recorder is uh, rugged and it has been tested up to and including a 308 rifle so quite strong quite sturdy and it's not just for air rifles although I will be fitting this to Munch's air rifle for the simple reason that his scope um, obviously doesn't get messed around and moved around like the rest of my scopes do and I can put it on there use it for some squirrels and some rats to do some daytime footage and some nighttime footage so let's go through what you actually get in the box. So as I said, they, they sent me out this um, item this week. Uh, in the box, there's a, a lens cleaning cloth, a pair of Allen keys, a spare O-ring, and a spare screw um, for the locking ring, for the attachment that fits onto the scope. Now, because they didn't know what size scope I was going to fit this to, they've actually sent me out three of these scope attachments. This one being the 48mm, there's a 45mm and a 42mm. I fitted the 42mm to the BSA scope which is fitted on the rifle behind me. There's an extended eyepiece which comes in the, in the, scope, in the kit as well. Obviously, as I said, this, this will withstand the recoil of a 308 rifle. There's a 70mm eye relief on this already. So that extra eyepiece just gives you a little bit more of a shield from the brightness from the screen. Charging cable for the, for the battery in there is also included. Inside the kit as well is a roll of insulating tape should you need to put some tape around the scope just to protect it or in fact just to pack out where that locking ring goes your scope. A nice soft grey bag that you can put the scope in your rucksack when you're not using it. And what I did like about this is the control panel on the back is very, very easy to navigate even in the dark. Your main power button is situated far over on the right hand side and then the other four buttons um, in across. Uh, your main menu is on the right hand side at the three o'clock position. At the nine o'clock position is the button, the one touch button to switch from uh, full daytime colour uh, HD over to black and white and then repeated presses of that button will brighten or dim the IR illuminator. Situated right at the front there, this illuminator by pulling the ring in and out that gives you the flood or the pencil beam effect of the brightness. On the side of the unit a little trap door your memory card is in there, so it comes with a 32 gig card. Obviously your charging point there with a micro um, USB and a 3.5mm uh, jack socket there so you can put an earpiece in there 
and play back the video and listen to the audio recording on there. Quite a nice feature. When you first power this up by using the diopter on the back of the scope, there's like a, a, a test card that they get you just to set the focus so that you can see the image nice and clearly. Once that's done, that's all sorted out. The other focusing is done by the wheel underneath there. They turn really, really nice and smoothly. Um, and obviously, once you set your scope up uh, and zeroed it, by putting this onto the back of the scope, you have the option then to move the crosshairs to the center of the screen. Now, they're not changing the zero point of your rifle. All it's doing is putting the crosshairs uh, into the center of the image which would be portrayed on your television set. A nice feature. This unit comes with a two-year warranty, um, which is very good. And it, as I said before, it's really, really easy and simple to fit and easy to navigate around the menu. So how do I go about fitting this on there? Obviously, I chose the 42mm um, attachment on here because that was almost the right size for this scope. I did, however, put two turns of insulation tape on there just really to protect the scope. Once that goes, fits that on there, you obviously fit it on with the scope on there. The reason you do that is to make sure everything's in, in the vertical position. Once you're happy with that position, you can then tighten up the clamp on there so it's nice and firm. The rest of the focusing you would do as usual uh, on this one, obviously the parallax is at the front of the scope, um, so the rest of the focusing would be done um, on that scope there. Now I've set this up at 20 yards yesterday, um, predominantly because one of the squirrel shoots I do is at 20 yards. So that's all set, ready to go. So let's have a look and see what sort of footage you get during a daytime shoot. So that's 20 yards to this target. flyer there, about 5mm off to the right. Let's kill the target. So I think that was five I put through there, so not, not a bad, uh, apart from the one flyer going off to the right, the rest of them all went through that elongated hole just to the left of centre. So more than happy that it 20 yards. Need him to come a little bit to the left. Good lad, keep going a bit more. Now come towards me, come get some nuts. That's it. Just gets a little bit closer and then he sees me in the tent and you can see his reaction. Oh, what's that? Too late. I think that just about sorted him out. Symptom. 
So it had been absolutely pouring down the rain and I didn't think squirrels would come out in the rain but this chap um, was obviously waiting for his breakfast and couldn't resist getting a bit damp. He should have perhaps stayed indoors. So we'll leave that little chap um, where he was uh, from a very wet Friday morning to the same day but obviously later on at night. Um, this was the first rat I saw that happened to be at 21 yards so it was perfect for the setting that I was on. One down. So the, I was trying to get all of these rats at the same sort of range to make it um, easier and, and a, a better know. shot. So this is a, a, a level, a entry level scope so hence a lolly stick size crosshairs on there. Um, I've got this now on my Element Titan to give it a try so I think we're only going to get better pictures now. So the farmer doesn't like these um, crapping in all his cattle feed so we'll get rid of those when we can get a chance. And at the end of these clips, I've, I've added three clips that I did on a previous evening using the sight mark rate, so you can see the, uh, the difference. Right, that tree over there, that tree there is 284 yards away. Now I would say that if there was a fox walking along there, this light would pick his eyes up quite easily. That's on the full pencil beam, if I pull it back onto the flood, I'll see you lose that definition of the tree. But zoom right up, so I could probably, if I fiddle around a bit more, I could probably get a better, better focus on that tree, but this isn't really the best sort of scope, it's only a small scope. But, um, so that's a good distance out to there. Good test. So as I said, uh, that was the uh, MV100. Now it's three clips from the Sightmark Wraith and you have to remember that the Wraith is, I think it's around 900 pounds now. So we're comparing a 900 pound scope here to just over 200 pound scope with the, with the Commander MV100. Um, I don't think there's a lot of comparison and I think the Commander in actual fact is better than the Wraith. Hello and welcome back. Well, once again, the British weather has got the better of me. Today is October the 31st, it's Halloween, and it's absolutely pouring down the rain outside. I had planned and was set up to go and do an early morning shoot on another squirrel feeder today to get a bit more footage of the MV100 Commander on the BSA rifle behind me, but I wasn't prepared to go out and venture in that horrendous weather. So. What I have done is I've put the 48mm um, clamp on the top of my Element Titan scope because um, I'm convinced that I'm only going to get much better footage on a much better scope. Now, the, the BSA scope on Munch's rifle is a very basic level entry scope, so the clarity in the glass isn't that good. Uh, I'm pretty confident by putting the NV100 Commander on the back of my Element Titan, the images are going to be far superior. So please remember to click on the bell for notifications because there will be some more videos coming up as I will continue to use this add-on device on the back of the scopes. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed using it, it's very easy to use, I'm impressed with all the functions on it. The IR is really good uh, if you're doing some close-up rabbiting and ratting, it's absolutely perfect. Although, on the video I did demonstrate that I could see right across that field um, a great distance with it. For the price range, if you're comparing this, which is US dollars and I've converted that this morning, it's about £200 in UK sterling. That's post-free to the UK. It comes with its own 32 gig card, it's got the battery in it, it's all ready to go. All you need to do when you order it is to make sure you 
click and add the right size scope attachment ring. As I said, this came with three 42, 45 and 48 uh, scope attachments. You can pack it out with a bit of tape. I've done that on the top of this Titan. I had to put some tape on there just to, pr to protect it and also just to pack out a couple of millimetres for that clamp to fit on snugly. There will be in the description at the end of this video a discount code for you to buy one of these. Um, and I would recommend it. If you're a person that does a bit of vermin shooting on an allotment or on a bit of land that you can go shooting on, if it goes into a, an early evening or starts to get dark a little bit earlier than you thought it was going to, clip that on there, switch to black and white. It is absolutely perfect and just the job to keep it in your rucksack as, as a standby. So thanks again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to like and subscribe and click on the notification bell. And I do look forward to seeing you again in one of my videos. Take care. Bye-bye for now. See you later. Well, there we are. It's time to uh, start writing your Christmas list out. So put one of those in there if you're in the market for a bit of uh, nighttime shooting. Uh, thanks again for watching. Get one of these scopes. You won't be disappointed. I'll see you later. Cheerio.